Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video. Today we're going to talk a little bit about sort of my recent failure but and then feedback and whatever. I'm going to show you how I act upon feedback to improve a model. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique in learned Vinci V style. So recently I went to the Nova Open. Uh, and Nova is a fantastic convention. It's in Washington, D.C. here in the U.S. Um, I made a video all about the pieces I was going to take to it. Um, so you can check that out. Uh, but those pieces, I won some awards in the Masters category, which I was happy with, but I didn't do as well as I was hoping. And, you know, I was sad about that, certainly. Uh, but at the same time, I spent some time, talked to both of the judges, and got some really excellent feedback. And it really helped and shaped uh, a lot of how I was sort of thinking about my models, and it just sort of helped me break through a little bit of a plateau. And today, what I want to take you through is what I do when I get that feedback to lock it in my brain. So I spent a lot of time with the judges, uh, talked to them, and then I came home. Now, I can't actually paint the model, or, you know, add paint to the model that fast. So the first thing I do is sit down and do a little digital repaint. So I'm going to take you through the model, show you the feedback the judges gave me, and show you how I then update the digital image of that so I have a roadmap to work for uh, the future. Okay? So I guess let's head over to the desk because we're going to go to the computer, and we're going to do all our painting digitally today. So specifically today we're going to focus in on the uh, Pirate Bust. This is from Big Child Creatives. And I want to start with the main feedback I got, which was about my sort of focus of the light. And the way I have her lit is very bright along the center of the model, right? Like I'm really drawing a lot of attention into the center area of the model. The problem is not everything in that center space am I accurately capturing that light on. So right away, we're going to start with the belt, and I need to bring that up and create a little bit more of that plane of light across the center of the belt. That means bringing it up in value a couple steps to create that shaft of light down the center of the model so that everything's focused. Now at the same time, I'm going to need to also darken the lower side of the model so that you have all the focus up top passing to uh, a lower shadow at the bottom, but that's for a future step. For now what I do is I really drill in, try to, you know, I'm going to need to still catch edges and stuff, so I'm going in. By the way, for all of this, I'm just using Paint 3D. It's like a very simple program that's on your computer. You don't need anything fancy to do this kind of stuff, but you can also just use Photoshop or GIMP or anything like that. Anything like that will work. Um, and so once I bring the belt up and I'm happy with that, my next area of focus is the head. Again, I have all this light on her face, but her head just doesn't come up near enough. And that was me just being too afraid to actually hit it with the light I, I uh, frankly knew it needed. And so even though I spend a lot of my life telling people to keep pushing contrast and to go farther than they think they should, I still suffer from it as well. So I then push the head, the light on the front of the bandana, way, way up. I'm going to bring that up in a value. I'm still following the folds, the shapes. I just need to move that entire spectrum along, right? A lot of what I'm doing here is think of like the... Uh, that red bar and the price is right. Um, you know, it moves along, it's got a certain distance, and you got to guess if the price, where the price is, and it's got to be somewhere in the red bar. That's the same thing with your value spectrum, right? Like, when I move up into these high highlights, the midtones need to come up as well. I can't have any deep shadows uh, in that primary area of light. The darkest colors are basically going to be my midtones. So I bring the, the bandana up, make sure it's nice and bright, really put that light punch on there, and you can see how immediately transformative it is to the entire model. Next up, I need to reshape some of the copper. I have a lot of the copper looking very evenly lit, but that's, again, not correct because there's a central area of light on the model, so that primary copper, I need to expand the highlight on it. I also need to somewhat darken it down a little because it's very orange and kind of drawing a little bit of attention away. This is where we're going to start getting into some of the shadows, but we'll focus on that more later. Um, so I basically expand out the primary highlight, which actually works to desaturate the orange, which means it won't draw as much attention. Then do some quick touch-ups to make sure I'm smoothing it out. And then I'm going to move over to the... Uh, 
other copper pieces on the side and actually darken them a little. I need to subtract a little light out of them, bring it into balance. They're off center, they're not in the primary shaft of light, so hence they need to get a little darker. One of the other things I noticed as I was working here was just how many little errors and tiny like things I was out of step on, like misplaced paint and stuff like that. Scritchy scratches that didn't look quite right. So certainly I need to go over this with my with my magnifiers and clean some stuff up as well as I'm going. Okay. The last thing I need to touch is the cloth around her chest. Um, her, like, her skin, especially her breasts, that area of the upper part of her chest, is super duper bright. And yet, that area of cloth around it is, again, not as bright, because I was just afraid to push the light on that deep red, and I shouldn't have been. I knew it needed to come up into the gray, I played around with it a little, and then chickened out. And that's my own, that's just fear, and it was wrong, and let's fix it. So, I come in, and I'm going to brighten that up. Now, not as much as the head. That's important to understand here. We're farther down the model, so we're going to not push this quite as far. Now, I still come up pretty bright, but we're just not going to go as bright as we would on the head because we want that, that central area of the figure, the face, to be the primary area of light and visual interest. With those four areas touched up in the spotlight, um, I'm in a much better place overall with my central lighting scheme, but the other part of the spotlight is the shadows. And that's where we're going to move into darkening the outer sphere of the model. So one of the things with the model is that I'm still pushing like white light everywhere. And one of the things I got that was really good feedback is as you move farther away from your warm light center, you can move into colder, weaker light, especially using blues. And I thought, and I looked at a couple pieces, talked to the judge, and I really liked this sort of advice. I thought it was very, like, it, it works to me, especially when you're going for that spotlight effect on the central part of the figure, as I am here. So I take some turquoise, basically, and I'm going to weaken some of those lights on the edge by turning them from white down into blue tones. I play around here with a couple different tones as I mess with it. Again, weakening the bottom of the sword, the tip of the sword, all those things that are forming, if you would, the outer bounds of the figure, right? So I'm going to weaken those down. Instead of them being in bright white light, we're going to take them down into a more uh, cool, calm blue light, okay? And uh, I also am going to like deepen some shadows and stuff like that as I go along, but I work back and forth and bring those down. Now, the other part of this is the bottles that are down by her uh, lower waist. They're a little too bright, a little too flashy, a little too eye-catching when they're down near the very bottom of the model. So in here, I'm going to do a couple things. One, I'm going to push a little bit of that soft blue light to the bottom of the cloth, just to make sure that it's there and present and there's some visual interest happening down there. The other thing I'm going to do is grab effectively like what would be a Payne's Gray and start darkening down the bottles. Both the, I'll start with just the liquid in the bottles, but ultimately I'll need to darken the whole area. So that'll be basically like a sort of universal shadow that I'm going to apply over everything very softly. A filter of this sort of blue-black to bring the value down on the lower part of the miniature, because now that we're down at the bottom area of it, over the total volume of the bust, we have to subtract out some of the light reduce it down, get it darker, and make sure that our spotlight focus is on the face, upper chest, the center of the model where we want the action to be, right? So that's where we're going to focus in. So I really try to get that area darker, uh, and it takes a couple passes. Like, I'm, I'm, because this is a digital tool, it's super fast. So the reason I'm playing with it softly now in here is so that I can test what is going to look right when I actually put brush to model? By completing all these steps, by playing with different colors in something digital that I can erase, that I can change, it becomes super fast. This whole process only took me like 20 minutes or so, 25 minutes, to do all these digital touch-ups, and that's going to be my complete roadmap going forward. And so by slowly darkening that lower area of the model until I feel like, yeah, that looks right. And that's why you'll see me zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out, and look at it as a whole. When you're working in these digital tools and setting yourself up, 
you want to make sure that you you don't live in the detail only zoom out look at the whole thing make sure you're in the right space okay the other thing I do next is a few simple weathering touch-ups. Um, I could use some more streaks. I need to even out some of the color. Some of the verdigris just doesn't quite look as clean or effective as it should. So I go in and do some minor touch-ups there where I can see uh, exactly, like, like where I can kind of map it out to how it should probably look to better frame the model. This is minor stuff, but it's important that I do it now while I'm here so I'm thinking about it and I've got it. And then I can, again, when I'm referencing this image later, as I'm actually painting, I have those small changes to reference. All in all, this one's a pretty simple process. There wasn't too much feedback on the weathering for it. It was just, again, little tiny cleanup stuff. But when you're competing at sort of the highest level of quality, little things matter a lot. So you have to really kind of dial in. And I often have this problem where I will, I won't. I, I don't know why. I just, it's a challenge I need to overcome. At any rate, with those minor weathering touch-ups out of the way, um, that brings us to the back of the uh, model. So on the back of the model, the problem is the dagger is way too bright and the blue is way too dim. Those things are just completely out of value with each other in, in a bad way. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is, again, lower part of the model, bring that way down. Not only am I going to increase the shadows considerably and bring that down, I'm also going to blue light some of the edges a little bit, like soften some of those edges, get it more into that soft blue cold tone that's much weaker, as well as increasing the shadows and just kind of bringing that all down. Now, that's a relatively simple process. Like this will actually be pretty easy with just a few glazes. Applying these kinds of shadows is actually going to be really easy with a brush. But again, I go back and forth, back and forth until I'm happy with exactly where I want to be with the, um, you know, with the, the actual uh, light in question. Now, the blue, on the other hand, is too dark. It needs to come up. So then my goal is going to be to, like, again, pop that up, especially towards the edges, the most towards that motivated light, so towards that edge. Effectively, I'm trying to meet in the middle between where the dagger was and where the uh, ambient cast light was. The cast light was too dim. The dagger was too bright. I need to kind of bring both of them together. So here I pop up that blue a little bit. And again, I can work back and forth. How bright should it be? How bright do I need to go? It's as easy as then just grabbing my shadow color if I want and kind of toning everything and bringing it back down. So that's going to be my sort of journey there with the back of the model where I'm going to work some of those lights, especially on the edges, the lower facing sides, the edge of leathers, the edges of all the pieces, really pop that light up some, make sure that we're getting the full catch of that on the shadow side uh, of the miniature. So uh, with that, my only other things where I needed some touch-ups in some of the hair where it just didn't feel quite right. Uh, so like, I, I touched a few minor things around like the side of the head, those kinds of things. Um, sort of just small stuff that I ended up doing. All in all, though, I, I'm really happy like, like with how this came out as a project. I like to do this as soon as I get back from the convention so that that way the feedback is locked in my head. I thought it over a bunch. I apply it to the model. I get to play with exactly the values. I get to do it in a way that isn't actually painting on the model. And then when it's time to sit down, I can pop this image up on my screen and just reference, 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 and make sure I hit it with all of that being as fresh as absolutely possible. And let's take a look. Here's the two compared against each other. Here's the old and here's the new. All in all, I, th I think you can really see the difference, right? Um, now, I will say some of you might look and go, I don't understand. It's not that huge of a difference. Well, when you're trying to move from like up one metal category or something in a master's category, again, like I said, little things make all the difference. You really have to focus in on all the details. And that is still a lesson I'm trying to drill into my own head, which gets too excited and wants to move too fast. But we all have our own journeys and that one's mine. But there you go. I hope you found this interesting. And the reality is these kinds of like digital paints can be a great way to go. If you're stuck on a model, and you don't know exactly what to do, take a picture of it, load it into software, and paint digitally around and see what you like. It's useful not just for recording these kinds of fixes and advice and feedback, but also just if you're stuck and you have kind of um, 
like painter's block. This can be a good way to unstick it. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this. Give it a like if you did. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating. We'll be back at the desk painting next week, of course. Uh, but as always, thank you so much for watching this one. If you want to support the channel, there's lots of ways you can do so. There's affiliate links down below. Uh, you can pick up everything you, you would want. Uh, it, not, it doesn't cost you anything extra. In fact, it often saves you money. We've got a brand new discount uh, from Goblin Hut for all the Dirty Down Weathering products. Uh, so check that out. I'm really excited about that. So if you want to save some money on the, that incredible Dirty Down stuff, you can check that out down below. As well as my lights that I use, my wet palette, all from Game Envy, and everything else you see in this video, all linked down below. Never cost you extra, and it really helps the channel out. There's also our Patreon. If you're focused on taking your next step, just like I am here, hey, we'd love to have you as part of the community. But as always, like I said, I really appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time.